So after our bear and funeral filled morning, I figured it might be prudent to start our afternoon by heading back over to the Roland household and checking up on Emma's mom, Sarah. Unexpectedly, it also seems like Mel might have had a similar idea. And while we don't really know a whole lot about Mel, he, he doesn't really seem to be the type of person to make a friendly house call. Still, Sarah seems to be doing all right, somber as ever, but at least not crying hysterically anymore, so it's good to know she's not in any imminent danger from the local delinquent. And if anything, she is happy to see Matthew and is fully willing to let us come inside. I'd say that might explain you know, if Mel is also inside the house, she might be looking for any friendly face. Yeah, Mel is nowhere down in the living room, and I, I can't picture her really just letting him roam around the house freely. But we're not going to pry too far into that. We want to try to keep things calm, you know, make some idle chit-chat, and... I mean, considering the things we've done this morning, uh, the funeral seems the more logical step. Doesn't really seem good to stress her out by bringing up the fact we were almost killed by a bear. And if anything, it at least shows us that Sarah is pretty empathetic towards Father Barton. Though she has not lost a child herself, she definitely feels for the worry and stress that he is going through right now. And Matthew being the, the kind soul that he is decides not to bring up that weird conversation we had where Father Barton's philosophy on the sweet release of death is probably the, the best thing to do right now. If anything, though, there, there's still the massive problem about our theory regarding the connection between Kathy and Emma and Emma's disappearance and Kathy's death. We still have absolutely nothing to go on. We've we've made no headway with learning more about Kathy. Outside the fact that, yeah, she got super savaged by a bear and choked by someone. And it's with this that Matthew decides it might be good to, to shift gears and... Yeah, we, we kind of reveal the fact that our our visit here, much like the, the visit to the funeral, is not totally altruistic. We... We want to continue our investigation. Thankfully, now that Sarah has calmed down, she is more than willing to let us head up to Emma's room and do a little snooping. And while I have full faith in the Mazurna Falls police force, there is a good chance that we might be able to uncover something ourselves. So yeah, while we do have a little bit of an escort, we are now freely able to head upstairs. If we would have tried this on the previous day, we would have gotten just lambasted by, by Steve and told, you know, leave now, so. So we don't have many options up here, and while we did want to go to Emma's room, the first place we actually want to head is over to the bathroom. And it's... It's a much larger and nicer bathroom than the one we have back at the shack, but the, the main reason I wanted to come in here is for an easily missed item inside the sink. And what do we find hidden away but a mysterious ring with what appears to be the letter I, or possibly the Roman numeral of one on it. It's definitely not a familiar ring to Matthew, though he, uh, as opposed to the necklace, which he is very certain that Emma would never wear, maybe, maybe Emma had worn this ring. Seems, though, that Sarah is also not familiar with the ring. Guess she might have never noticed it in the bathroom either. But for now, anything mysterious definitely could be a clue, so... Yeah, we are going to hold on to this for right now. We might be able to ask a few people around town to 
See if anybody else has a better idea about it. With that out of the way, though, we can now head over to Emma's room and, you know, snoop around for some clues. First, most obvious thing about this room is that it definitely has a overwhelmingly white motif. I feel a part of this might be some symbology, I, I guess, with purity and innocence, and you know, overall, I think that might just be an, an overall veneer of innocence. I don't know. Might be reading a bit too much into it, but really the one thing that draws the attention is like the soul not overwhelmingly white thing in the room, which is this vase here. And upon closer inspection, yeah, there is something waiting at the bottom for us. And much like the ring, I think we're going to want to go ahead and pocket this mysterious key. I can only assume that Emma was purposely hiding it in her room for some important reason. Problem is that, much like the ring, Sarah doesn't really have any idea about what this key could be for. It definitely isn't some key to the house itself. And I do appreciate that Matthew is always very courteous and, you know, polite. We never just want to openly take things, even even with the lighter. Just wanted to make sure and pay for that. Also, strangely, Matthew seems to be familiar with this type of key. He just doesn't seem to know exactly where he might have seen it before. Outside of the key, there isn't really much else to, to Emma's room here. No, no other massive revelations, nothing really else to investigate. So we're, we're actually pretty much done at the Roland household for right now. I do have a, a general idea about who else we might be able to ask about this key, though. And that's our other good friend, Winona. right now is that, you know, we have the entire town of Mazerna Falls to deal with, so finding Emma can be a bit of a crapshoot. I think you could technically maybe call her up and get some hints from that. Otherwise, though, you're kind of just blindly heading around town until you manage to stumble across her. And since you are, you know, fighting time here, yeah, you know, while she could be at one place at 1 p.m., she might be in a completely different place an hour later. So still a bit concerned that we did not see Mel. I guess he could have just parked here, though that also seems super weird. Yeah, we're off to go find Winona. Thankfully though, I know exactly where she might be at this time of day. Uh, she's waiting in the Sheriff's Department, probably trying to find some new information on Emma. She is just racked with worry. But yeah, anytime we want to get a character's feedback on a particular item, if we go into our fanny pack, we'll see that yeah, we can show them the item or get a, a little bit of information on it ourselves. And by showing the key to Winona, it does appear that she has at least some inkling that it's a it's a locker key. I mean, there's all types of lockers. There's gem lockers. There's bus station lockers. But the, this is actually a locker that is 
that is super familiar, or should be super familiar to both uh, Matthew and Monona, any people of their age bracket. That's because it is the locker, it's a key to the locker at their school. Yep, Matthew is a, it was a bit of a thick guy. And I, I don't mean like he's an absolute unit, I mean like he... It's not always quick on the draw. So, now that we know where the key is to, I mean, the next logical step would probably be to, to head over and check Emma's locker. Still don't know why exactly Emma would have been hiding this in her room, out, outside the, the obvious fact that I guess she is hiding something very important at the school. And hey, Winona is super excited as well. She wants to go with us, so it seems like the next place we should head. Sadly, it it doesn't really seem that late in the day. I know that, that dusk hits pretty early, but it's still only like 1 p.m. in the after it's yeah, it's like one in the afternoon. Still I don't know, that, that thing about Mel's bike being outside Emma's house is still super weird to me. I, I want to go back and check up on that. Now it seems a bit redundant since we just left there. But yeah, by the time we make our way back, Mel is gone and instead it seems like Steve is back home. Yeah, it's actually... It's pretty good to become associated with who drives what. Uh, like, you know, Mel is the only person that drives a motorcycle. I think uh, Cohen drives around like a red, you know, Suzuki hatchback type of Jeep. And I think, I'm wanting to say the, the next noticeable car is probably Dennis's, uh, which is Mel's father's. Like, Dennis drives a, a big yellow fancy truck, I guess, to show off his wealth. But yeah, it is kind of good that we came here before, before Steve showed up. I, I feel like he might still have blocked us from heading upstairs. Seems like he wants to have a, a little one-on-one -on -one talk with us, which Sarah decides to excuse herself from. If anything, I, I still kind of worry, especially from the character portraits, that every conversation we're going to have with the role, in, the role in patriarchy and matriarchy is always going to be a bit of a downer. But at least in this case, Steve actually has some, some good news for us, I suppose. He's much like, much like Sarah, he's pretty happy with our, with our relationship with their family. Seems that Sarah is doing a lot better because of our hard work and... You know, inspirational motivation on the case. But even even while she is doing better, there's still the concern that Sarah just will not leave the house. She seems pretty much locked inside, possibly under the expectation expectation that Emma might be back at any moment. And yet, yeah, looks like Steve is also on the on the same initial thought process that Matthew was, you know, whether or not something relating to Kathy might also be re related to Emma. But yeah, we got some sad news on, on, that, on that situation, in that we have absolutely nothing to go on. We don't know Kathy. We have absolutely no knowledge whatsoever right now that Kathy and Emma had any relationship, and... Even though Morgan just decided to let himself in, he's he's not going to be much help on this this angle either. Still, this particular comment is a bit strange to me because already at this point, I feel like we we've already got some impression that Emma has been keeping secrets from both Matthew and Winona.
Out of nowhere, though, Steve does have an interesting bit of information for us about Kathy, and that she has been seen with Mel around town. In fact, Steve has seen her with Mel at a very specific point, and that's in front of Bar Wolves, local hotspot and place to get stabbed in the thigh. Yeah, overall, still can't really go on surface level impressions here. Everybody's got their secrets, I guess. Yet again, some, some people seem to have some idea that there are similarities between Emma and Kathy. But we don't have time to relish on those thoughts. sudden scream we heard from upstairs was Sarah. And after a brief investigation from the local constables, they haven't found that anybody has broken in, and instead, I don't want to say in their lackadaisical manner, but they, they just seem to brush it off as, you know, blowing things out of proportion, possibly just in a panic attack, if anything. Definitely not anything I guess they feel needs further investigation. I would say to some degree that seems a bit suspicious that they are just kind of brushing it off, much like the whole, you know, choking marks, but... I, I'm willing to accept the fact that it's a small town, they're not used to this type of hot, big city, violence and battery type of action. But I, I still feel like Morgan could be doing a little bit of a better job with this investigation. I mean, honestly, at this point, I don't know what he has really done, if anything. I mean, he's, he's interrogated Mel, that was pretty much it. Thankfully, Detective Matthew is here to, to follow up and, you know, get some more information out of the witness. And sadly, though, it, it's a little bit hard to take Sarah seriously. I mean, she, she didn't actually directly see anybody. She just... I don't know. It's It almost seems like a supernatural angle here that she just felt someone. There was some there was some evil lurking presence up in Emma's room. Oh yeah, also there was the physical evidence of there was a window open that someone could easily get into. And that would have been probably really good for either the police to pick up on or for Sarah to even mention. I, you know, Maybe they, they just were willing to discount anything she said just because she seemed hysterical. But yeah, I guess Steve and uh, Sarah here didn't really have a, a super close idea about the ins and outs of Emma's room. She seemed pretty secretive. Didn't really like them going in there. So, I do think it it is definitely worth taking another look. I also think that if we didn't come here earlier and do a investigation beforehand, yeah, I kind of feel like we might have missed out on getting that key and even possibly that ring. So unexpectedly, it looks like we've managed to hop forward almost two hours in time, so I don't think we missed anything in that, in that 
window of time. But definitely something worth keeping in mind. So another good thing about having visited this room previously and somewhat recently, we are able to pick out something that is different than before. Yeah, it's the fact that this desk that had been previously closed is now just wide open. Seems to be yet another sign that someone has been in here since we left, though I guess Sarah maybe could have opened it. It just is not telling anybody, though it seems a bit strange. But yeah, go going back to the fact that apparently Emma did not like uh, Sarah and Steve snooping around in here. Whatever was kept in this drawer was actually something pretty important to Emma, and I think also has some parallels between, you know, Twin Peaks as well as Deadly Premonition, and that's the fact that inside that drawer, well, that is where Emma would normally store her diary. Yeah, she always kept it locked, uh, though I, I, I don't know, it's, it's hard to gauge what she might have been trying to hide in there. I mean, obviously diaries and journals are meant for, you know, someone's own personal introspection, but... Yeah, apparently Emma had a, a little bit more of a, a savage reaction whenever anybody tried to invade her private spaces. So right now it appears that indeed someone did break in and the only thing they managed to take was Emma's diary. Which makes me think even more that there was something incriminating super important that they would go out of their way to, to break into this house, which is definitely a, a focal point of the local community. Seems a pretty brash and dangerous thing for somebody to do, especially, you know, in broad daylight. So, it seems, not to rub it in Morgan's face, but we found something pretty obvious and pretty easily found here. And it seems to hearken that there is a larger conspiracy, or even the fact that, you know, whoever might have done something to either Emma or Kathy had actually come into the house just now. That's a bit, that's a bit disconcerting and worrying. Still, Morgan has already left for the, the sheriff's station by now, I think. I think the only person that's actually here still from the sheriff's department is uh, is an old Hudson, and he's not going to be much help to us. Instead, we are going to find a little bit of help from, I guess, some local neighbors slash rubberneckers here. In fact, this woman to the left-hand side is going to give us some somewhat useful information. Hmm. So, s someone named Mr. Perry might have seen the culprit. And yet again, that probably would have been super great to to tell Sheriff Morgan, but I guess he just never wanted to interview anybody. But yeah, old man Perry saw someone suspicious climbing out of what I can only assume to be Emma's window. There is a, a little bit of a, a hitch here with old man Perry, though. And probably a reason why, even if I, I think this woman had brought up his name, 
the the sheriff might not have cared. It seems that old man Perry says some odd things sometimes. Still, though, we don't want to really discount that yet. You know, we don't want to leave any stone unturned, at least not in the early stages of this investigation. And it does kind of work out. Old man Perry lives pretty close by. But he usually doesn't spend his time at home. Instead, he spends his, you know, almost every waking hour off in the park. So, that is where we are going to make our way over to next. And, yeah, it's usually better to get him later on in the afternoon. So, you know, timing-wise, everything is actually kind of working out for us pretty well here. two options of people to talk to, but yeah, it's the guy here on the bench that is of interest to us. Matthew, as cordial as ever, doesn't realize that he is stepping into a bit of a, a verbal trap here. Yeah, if we thought that there were difficulties with talking to Barbara, Old Man Perry is a, is a whole other kettle of fish. Yeah, yet again, Mazerna Falls trying to sneak in a little bit of humor here with the doddering old man character. We immediately go into investigation mode. We already... I think the only way he would ever be here or even talk to us is if we talk to that, that lady outside of the Roland house. And, yeah, he did see someone sneaking in. He, he thinks that we might have seen that person as well. He doesn't know that we just talked to somebody that recounted his own story. And what good luck for us, even though he, he seems to be a bit of a doddering old man, he does seem to know exactly what the person looked like, so I'm pretty excited to, to learn about the our first real possible suspect here. Alright, so that's a bit vague. Could be plenty of people. I guess could be just normally dressed, maybe in a suit, maybe even in a uniform. All right, that's a little bit more specific. Uh, maybe Halloween, which would be strange. Honestly, anything with a mask is a bit strange. It could be you know, fucking Point Break where they robbed the bank in those president's masks, but Matthew seems to have a little bit clearer of an idea. Could be, could be Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. Old Man Perry says that that's exactly what he means. There was Jason Voorhees breaking into the Roland house. But, yeah, at this point, it, it definitely seems that maybe Old Man Perry isn't 100% there. One, he doesn't seem to be very much into our conversation, just kind of blathering on. But, yeah, we, I mean... I think it would have been pretty obvious if Jason Voorhees was somewhere in, in Emma's house. Also, I don't really remember Jason riding around on a motorcycle. Especially not outside of the Heinz Diner. The only... The only motorcycle we ever see in town is... is Mel's. Hmm. I mean, that that does kind of go with the fact that we did see Mel's motorcycle outside of Emma's house. It kind of makes me think more and more that we need to have a definite conversation with Mel. See, even while Old Man Perry wasn't uh, 
Very obvious help. He, he did kind of reaffirm some suspicions I had, though we will have to follow up with those next time as we head into the final nighttime hours of our second day here. Hopefully you will join me then, and hopefully we can manage to unravel more of this mystery. See you then.